First definition. So we say that a graph is connected if for every pair of vertices u and v, there exists a path that starts at u and ends at v. And if the graph is not connected, then we say it's disconnected. Okay, so hopefully this is a fairly straightforward definition. I think it should be easy to visualize, right? So if I take this graph here in the bottom corner, um, so just to be clear, so the graph is like all of these vertices here are part of the same graph, right? If I take this graph, it's disconnected because if I look at the vertex u here and the vertex v, there's no path that starts at u and ends at v. So this is a disconnected graph. Um, and the components of a graph are the uh, maximal connected subgraph. But I mean, so that's a kind of technical way to define it. But really, hopefully it's kind of clear what a component is, right? If I, so I have a graph which is disconnected, or it could even be connected, but a component is just the, the kind of blobs of connected vertices, the maximal blobs of, of connected vertices. So this thing I've circled in yellow here is a component these three vertices because they uh, it's a connected set of vertices and it's maximal. So, so I took these four vertices, for example, this is not a component because, because a component like would have to contain all of the vertices that are connected to these ones. So, so I took all of this, then this would be a component. Um, are there any questions about these definitions? Cause these are going to be fairly important, not just today, but uh, for the rest of the, this part of the course. Okay, so I'll kind of assume that this is clear. So a graph is connected if basically, you know, it's, well, connected. <laughs> okay, so let me just kind of review something which is gonna be important today. Um, I know it's been a long time since the before the break. Uh, you also had a test before the break, which you were focusing on. Um, so you may have forgotten some of these things from, uh, from way back when we talked about them. So just to review, um, remember this thing called the handshaking lemma. So the handshaking lemma says that for every graph G, um, if I add up over all vertices of G, the degree, so oh, I'm summing up over all V in the vertex set of the degree of V, where remember the degree of V is the number of edges incident to V, right? So if I've got a vertex V, if I've got you know five edges coming from it, then this would be a graph with uh, degree equal to five, right? And what we proved, so this was something we called the handshaking lemma. Um, it says that if I add up all the degrees, then that equals two times the number of edges. Does everyone, anyone remember this? Yes, no, kind of. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> good. So then it's good that I'm reviewing it because this is gonna be important today. Um, but yeah, basically the idea of this was that like, if you look at the left-hand side, you add up all the degrees, well, that's gonna count every edge twice because you know if i look at an edge from this vertex to that one when i added up this guy's ver you know this vertex's uh degree i i kind of counted that edge but then i also counted it when i added up this vertex degree so this sum counts every edge twice so it must be equal to two times the number of edges and so as a kind of consequence of this um we know that if i add up the degrees in a graph it always has to be an even number Right, because two times the number of edges is, is an even number. Two times anything is an even number, um, and that also implies that. So, if the sum of the degrees are even, that implies that there's always an even number of vertices of odd degree, right? Because if I take, if I had an odd number of vertices of odd degree, and the rest of them had even degree, if you think about it, that means that uh, the sum of the degrees would be odd. Okay, and what I want to kind of just mention here quickly, which is, it's it's not that deep of a, an observation, um, but it's kind of important to notice that like the same thing holds if you just look at a component of a graph. So if I just look at like a component of the graph and I add up the vertices, uh, if I add up their degrees, then that's gonna equal two times the number of edges inside that component. Um, so in particular, any component has an even number of odd degree vertices. Okay, was that too fast or is that, uh... Is that helpful to remember? Any questions about this? I think everyone's taking a while to get back into the swing of things. Um, me too. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's, uh, yeah. So let's get into the actual topic of today. Uh, okay, so another quick kind of definition. So when I say the word multigraph, 
Um, basically, a multigraph is kind of the same thing as a graph. So remember, a graph is just you know vertices with edges between them, so dots and lines. Um, except the difference with a multigraph is that a pair of vertices can be joined by more than one edge. Um, so that's one difference. And the other difference is that um, I, I, I allow a vertex to be joined to itself. And when an edge, so in a multigraph, if an edge goes from one vertex back to the same vertex, like this one down here, so I call that kind of edge a loop. So an edge that goes from one vertex to itself is called a loop. Um, and so this is basically a picture of a multigraph, right? So, you know, so it's kind of the same thing as a graph, except that, yeah, here between these vertices, you've got like three edges instead of one, um, and you've got these loops. Okay, so is it clear what the definition is? Okay, yet another definition. So a trail in a graph is a walk that doesn't repeat any edges. Okay, so, um, so basically a trail is a way of walking around the graph. So when you walk in a graph, of course, you must go across edges, right? So you walk around in the graph, but and you're allowed to come back to the same vertex as many times as you want, but the rule is um, what you can't do is go along the same edge more than once. So, for example, if I look at this thing, so R, S, P, C, so I'm, I'm dealing with this graph over here on the left. If I take, uh, yeah, R, S, P, uh, C, B, S, N, that's a trail. So let's see. So if I follow this, so I start at R, I go along to S, I go to P, I then go to C, and you'll see that um, I go to B, and you'll see that I, I'm never gonna go across the same edge twice. Uh, so I now go to S, so now I'm repeating the vertex S, so it's not a path because I'm repeating a vertex, but I'm not gonna repeat an edge. So now I'm gonna go over to N and I'm gonna stop. Okay, so that's a trail. Um, but if I took B, Y, Z, C, B, Y, that's not a trail because the edge um, B, Y is repeated. And then a, cir a circuit is just a trail that starts and ends at the same vertex. Okay, so it, it goes around the, the graph, um, it doesn't repeat any edges, and it ends up in the same place where it started. Okay, I realize this is a lot of definitions and it's hard to keep these things straight, um, but I, I really recommend practicing these definitions and like really uh, trying to remember which ones are which because this could come up on the test um, and you need to know the definitions. I'm not going to always repeat them, okay? Okay, so um, so this is the type of question we're going to focus on in the rest of this lecture. <clears throat> so the basic question is like that. I mean, here's, here's just an example. Um, so I remember as a kid, I don't know why, but I feel like there was always this, there was this question, you know, people would kind of challenge or I don't know, other kids would kind of challenge each other, you know, can you draw this picture without lifting your pen? Um, maybe not everybody has seen this. Like, has anyone, like, is this like a, is this just in my, my childhood or what? Um, can you draw this picture without lifting your pen? Has anyone tried to do this before in their life? Okay. <laughs> so people have seen this before. Okay. So this is the type of question we're going to deal with today. What types of pictures can you draw without lifting your pen? So this one, you may know you can draw. So if I just, you know, I do something like this, I hope I don't mess it up. Okay, I am gonna mess it up. Never mind. Uh, I go, okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, can I draw this one? Ah, so I'm starting in the wrong place. So that's important here. So so if you if you notice that I kept on trying to start uh, in this position, that's a bad idea. So if I start here, that's right. <laughs> so that's gonna be the key to this lecture. So. If you start with the vertices of odd degree, then you have a chance. You might still screw up, okay? But if you start with a vertex of odd degree, then you have a chance. Um, but if you start with a vertex of even degree, you don't have any chance. You will not be able to draw this picture. Okay, and we're gonna try to understand why that's the case. Um, can I draw these things? I think the answer is, uh, actually, we're going to show that the answer is no. Uh, I think for both of these things. So the answer is no here. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, the answer is no, and the answer here is no. But we want to kind of understand when is the answer yes and when is the answer no for different types of pictures. They're not all going to look like this, you know, the, some box with you know some sort of a, a house. Um, but 
yeah, so generally we want to know when can you draw these things, when can't you? So this is something that actually, believe it or not, um, you know, a, a serious and famous mathematician like uh, Leonard Euler was interested in way back in 19, or sorry, 1736. Um, and he had a very specific example in, in mind. So he was interested in knowing, you know, can you walk around Königsberg? So this was some some city, which I believe now is, so I believe this is now modern day St. Petersburg, I believe. I didn't look this up before the lecture, um, but I think this is now St. Petersburg in Russia. Somebody can confirm, confirm that if you, if you Google it. Uh, so can you walk around Königsberg in a way that crosses every, so it had, so Königsberg had seven bridges. Can I cross each of them exactly once? Um, and, uh, yeah. Is there a way to walk around to do that? Oh, Kalingrad. Okay. My bad. So not St. Petersburg. It's now Kalingrad. Great. Thank you. Um, and here's a picture of the way that Königsberg looked back then. It doesn't look like this anymore. Um, but you've got these seven different bridges shown in green. And you've got these different regions of the, of the, of the city. Um, so this is actually a graph theory problem, if you think about it, right? Because wh what I can do is I can take each region and I can represent it as a vertex. So here I've got, a, I'm going to call that one A. I'll call this part of the city B. I'll call that one C and this one D. Okay, I think that's all of them. And then I'm going to represent the bridges by edges. Okay, so there's, a, there's from A to B, there are two bridges. Uh, from A to C, there's one bridge. Do let me know if I mess this up. From A to D, there's two bridges, I think. And then from D to C, there's a bridge. So have I got seven here? Three, four, five, six, nope. Uh, and then from C to B, there's a bridge. Okay, so that should be seven bridges. And what Euler was interested in is, can I go through all the bridges exactly once? So that's the same as one of these questions about drawing a picture without lifting your pen, right? So if I start some... So is it possible to start somewhere in this picture, you know, walk around and basically draw this picture um, without lifting your pen? So that's the same as walking across the bridges where you cross every bridge exactly once. Okay, is that clear? And okay, I don't, I, I don't know what this YouTube video is about, but it, it sounds uh, um, potentially interesting. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so, um, so here the answer is no. Okay. Um, but then Euler was interested in, you know, the same question we've been talking about, when can you do it and when can't you do it? So which pictures can you draw without lifting your pen and which ones can you not draw? Okay, so this one you can't draw, but but uh, under which conditions can you draw one of these pictures? Um, okay, so because Euler was interested in this, so in honor of Euler, we've uh, called these things Eulerian circuits. So an Eulerian circuit in a multigraph is a circuit that includes every edge exactly once. In other words, it's a walk in a graph that starts somewhere and it, you know, you walk around the graph, you use edge, every edge exactly once. Okay, you might use a vertex more than once, but you use every edge exactly once and you start, you end up at the same place where you started. And equivalently, this gives us a way of, you know, if you have an Eulerian circuit, that, that gives you a way of drawing the graph without lifting your pen in such a way that you end up in the same place where you started. Okay, and we say that a graph is Eulerian if it has an Eulerian circuit. Okay. So we want to understand which graphs have Eulerian circuits. Is that clear? Here's, so let's, before we try to characterize it, let's just get some necessary conditions. So here's a, an observation, which I think is, I mean, it's kind of obvious if you think about it. So if G has an Eulerian circuit, then G has to be connected, right? Because suppose I take, I don't know, a graph which is disconnected like this one, you know, can I draw this without lifting my pen? Well, of course not, because, you know, basically if I, you know, if I start drawing over here and I draw the whole thing, let's say, you know, I, I have to lift my pen to start drawing the other component. So, um, so basically the proof is just, I mean, um, well, uh, well, okay. Actually, perhaps there's a slight, hmm, I mean, in some sense, this maybe is not completely correct because if I did have this graph, so this is a disconnected graph, but if you think about it, um, it is kind of, it does kind of satisfy, it does have an Eulerian circuit. It has a circuit that goes through all the edges exactly once. So maybe I should say, um, maybe the definition, let me look at the definition in the textbook quickly. Well, anyway, so let, maybe I, I won't waste any time on this, but um, basically, um, 
Yeah, depending on how your definition goes. Um, so it's it's connected except for maybe some isolated vertices. So there's that slight issue, but uh, but let's not not worry about that. Um, right. So it's clear that it has to be connected because you know the circuit. You know, if 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 I use all the edges, then uh, there can't be two different components which have edges. Um, yeah. Um, here's another observation. Okay. So and this comes back to the comment from earlier when you know I was uh, you know correctly uh, you know suggested to start at a vertex of odd degree when I was trying to draw that picture. Um, so if G is Eulerian, then every vertex of G has even degree. Now remember, so this is because so um, so remember we have to start and end at the same vertex in an Eulerian circuit. Um, so let me give you kind of a, a, a quick proof of this. So um, so every time, well, basically the idea here is the number of times you enter a vertex v is equal to the number of times you leave v. Okay. And if the number of times you, so the, basically then the number of edges where you come into V has to equal the number of edges where you go out of V. Um, and so therefore the number of edges incident to V must be even. So this also, this also applies, so note, this also applies to the, to the first vertex you start with uh, because, um, because we have this restriction that the place where you end is equal to the place where you start. Okay, so here's the kind of picture, right? So basically every time you come into a vertex, you also have to leave. So if you kind of match up the uh, the incoming, you know, incoming uh, edges and the outgoing edges, you can see that you're always going to get an even even number. So basically, every time you use the vertex, it counts two it, to the it contributes two to the degree, and so overall, the degree is a multiple of two. So it's even. Uh, if you look at the first vertex, well, the first time, like you leave, you didn't come into it before. Um, but every time, every other time you come in and you leave, it looks like this. And then at the end, because you end at the same place you started, you're going to come in. So it's always, it's again, it's going to be an even number of uh, edges. Is that clear? So, so that's another observation. Okay. So here's uh, Euler's theorem, which is quite beautiful. So, so we gave two necessary conditions there, um, and it turns out that those are sufficient as well. So a multigraph G is Eulerian if and only if G is connected. And let's not let's not worry about isolated vertices here. Um, so I'll I'll address this later. I'll have to look at the the definition in the textbook again and, and let you know how um, yeah what. So I'll I'll make an announcement about this later. Um, but if G is connected and every vertex of G has even degree, okay. So this completely tells you which pictures can I draw without lifting my pen where you start and end at the same vertex. Okay, so we've proven one direction of this, right? We've proven the only if direction. Okay, so what we need to prove is, so need to show that if G is connected and all degrees are even, then there exists an Eulerian circuit. So just to be clear, we've already proven one direction, and this is the direction we still need to prove. Okay. Um, so the way I want to describe this proof is by actually giving you an algorithm which will find uh, an Eulerian tour, or sorry, an Eulerian circuit. Some people call them Eulerian tours. So here's the. So let me describe the algorithm, and then we'll show that this algorithm always works. Okay. So this algorithm is called Fleury's algorithm. So Here's how it goes. So start at any vertex u of g. Okay, so we just start somewhere. And now here's what you do. So in every step, you're going to start, you're going to go from where your current position is, so the current vertex, let's call it v, and you're going to pick one of its neighbors, and you're going to walk, you're going to take a step to that neighbor. And let's call that neighbor w. And when you take that step, so you're going to follow along some edge, and whenever you take a step, you always erase the edge that you use, okay? So you take a step, you always erase the edge. And whenever, so sometimes when I erase that edge, the vertex that we were at before, which we called V, the degree of that vertex might go to zero, right? Because it might've been the last, like V might, 
be a vertex here with only one neighbor, you know, only one edge coming from it. And when we take this step and we erase that edge, v has degree zero. If that happens, we delete, we also erase the vertex v. Okay. And now here's the kicker. Here's the important thing about this algorithm. So we always, so here's how we, so we don't choose the, the, the neighbor w arbitrarily. We choose it in a smart way. So we always choose w in such a way that the graph we get after doing the erasing, so after erasing the edge and possibly erasing v, if it has degree zero, zero um, remains connected. So if it's possible to do that, we always choose w so that that happens. Okay, so this maybe is a weird way to describe the algorithm, um, but are there any questions? So, um, so it's not what's not clear is that there always exists a choice of w which keeps the graph connected, but we're going to prove later that this w always exists. Okay, so that's going to be the important thing. So again, choose you you start somewhere, you take a step, erase the edge, and always. And if if the vertex where you were at before has degree zero, you erase that vertex, and you always try to make the choice in such a way that uh, the graph stays connected. And we want to show that it's always possible to do that. So let's uh, just look at how this algorithm works to get a bit of a feel for it. Um, okay, so let's look at a specific ex example. So we've got this graph. Um, I think if you look, you'll see that all the degrees are even, and we want to find an Eulerian circuit. So like the algorithm says, we just start anywhere. So I just picked this vertex kind of arbitrarily, and this is where we're going to start. So I, I label that vertex with one, okay? Because that's the starting place. Now, the algorithm says, pick a neighbor of that vertex. Let's call it two, you know, vertex two, and take a step from one to two. And when you take the step, you erase the edge, okay? And if you can, if you look here, it actually, in this case, it doesn't matter which one we choose because no matter which direction we go, the graph is always going to stay connected in this case. Okay, so at the next step, it looks like this. Is it clear how I went from this picture here? So is it clear what I'm doing in this first step, going from here to here? I'm taking a step. So the in every picture, the yellow highlighted vertex is the current vertex. And the green vertex, the vertex with a green number is the next vertex. So... We started here, we go to two, we erase the edge. Now I'm gonna to go to three, and I'm gonna erase the edge from two to three. Um, so I had no choice here, right? There's only one neighbor of, two, of the vertex two, so I had to go to, th to, to this vertex down here, right? I had to go here, I had no choice. Um, and when that happens, we erase the edge, and now when we erase the edge, the vertex two has degree zero, so we erase the vertex two. So, so there's no vertex here, right? and this edge is missing, right? So basically, this is the stuff we've deleted. Okay, now the current vertex is three, um, and we again have a lot of choices, right? We could have we could go up here for four, right? We could pick that one, we could pick that one, or we could pick this one. It doesn't really matter. Um, so let's just pick this, this one here. So when we do that, we move from three to four, we erase the edge. I know this is tedious, but here's, now here's a, Here's the step where we need to do a bit more thinking. So currently we're at vertex four, right? That's our current location. We're here. We have to be careful. If I, if next time, if I chose the fifth vertex to be here, then what's going to happen when I take a step and I erase the edge, right? If I went from four to this black five and I erase the edge, the graph is going to go, it's going to become disconnected, right? Which is bad. So we can't do that. So we have to be careful when we choose five that we have to choose it in a way that the graph doesn't become disconnected. Um, and we really only had two choices, right? We could choose this one or we could choose that one. So so we choose the green one. Is it clear why I wanna choose that the fifth vertex over here, not up here, right? I want to, so the algorithm says you always choose in a way that doesn't disconnect the graph. So, okay, so then what's gonna happen is I move from four to five, I erase the edge. Um, and then, yeah, then I move from five to six, I erase the edge, and now I erase the vertex five because it has degree zero. And then I keep going and going and going. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but uh, uh, but hopefully, I mean, this is some illustration of how this algorithm works. Are there any questions about anything? To be honest, the most important thing for you to learn here 
is the statement of Euler's theorem, right? The fact that if you, all the vertices have even degree and it's connected, then there exists an Eulerian circuit, right? That's kind of, and and that that's an if and only if. So that's that's the most important thing here. Um, but also, it is useful to kind of understand this algorithm as well, um, right? In case I ask you to find an Eulerian circuit, so if I ask you to find one, then this algorithm might be very useful for doing that. Okay, so we claim that this algorithm works. In other words, I claim that um, no matter how we do this algorithm, it's always going to give us an Eulerian circuit at the end, right? So if I just write down the vertices that I visit during this algorithm, that gives that's actually an Eulerian circuit. Um, okay, well, it's clear that this algorithm never goes across the same edge twice, right? Because every time I go across an edge, I erase it, right? So it can go between the same two vertices more than once because it's a multigraph, so there might be multiple edges, but it never uses the same edge twice. So that's one um, thing. So, so it never uses same edge twice because we always erase the edges that get used. So this is kind of clear. Um, so all we want to show is that it uses every edge. So every edge gets used. So if it fails to use the edges, all the edges, then what happens? Well, what happens is that we get to a situation where there's still some edges that haven't been used, but there's no possible choice for the next move. Basically, we get somewhere where we're stuck, right? Where the algorithm doesn't know what to do. Um, like, for example, where there's no vertex W, where moving to that vertex would uh, not disconnect the graph, for example. Um, so, okay, so there's two different ways that this problem can happen. So, so let V be the current vertex of the algorithm. Um, so one thing that could be bad is if V has degree zero, so this is the current vertex of the algorithm, but there's still some edges in the graph somewhere, right? Because then there's no way to choose the next vertex. So that would be a failure. This kind, this picture. So if I let, so V is the current vertex. Okay. So let's assume, let's suppose this happens, and we want to get a contradiction. So what I do is I look back at the previous vertex of the algorithm. So I call it W. So there must have been a previous vertex because the, if if you know, if V looks like, if the picture, if the situation looks like this, then V wasn't the first vertex, right? Because we are assuming the graph is connected. Um, so at the previous step, right? So the graph, the, the, uh, we can assume that at the previous step, the graph, step, the graph was still connected, right? So, um, right? Because what we're, what we're really trying to, so we're, we're trying to prove that the, so we can look at the first time the algorithm fails. So actually, let me make this a bit clearer. So let V be the current vertex at the first step where the algorithm fails. So if I go back to the previous step, then the algorithm hadn't failed yet, and so the graph must still be connected. So there must be some other neighbor of W. So let's call it, I don't know, um, U. Now, you ask yourself, why did the... So the algorithm, when it was at W, why did it go to V? Well, it wouldn't have chosen V because um, if, it cho if it chooses V and it erases the edge, then, v be then the graph becomes disconnected, okay? So it would have never chosen to go to V because it, it would have had another option. So it has an option of U, for example. So this is, this is kind of a technical proof. I, I am seeing more and more as I get into this. Um, but, uh, but really, the, the more important things to, to understand rather than understanding the proof is, is more about the statement of the theorem and also how to run the algorithm. So you should be able to do this algorithm yourself uh, even if you can't like fully understand why it works, it's important to be able to do it. Um, and if you do want another kind of explanation of how the algorithm works, you can look in the textbook. Uh, so there's a, another explanation in there. Okay, so let's look at another way that the algorithm can fail. Um, oh wait. Um, okay, so okay, so suppose that when the algorithm fails, the degree of v is currently equal to one. Okay. So before we looked at the case when the current degree of v is zero. Now we look at the case when it's one, and then we'll look at the case when it's at least two at the first time when the algorithm fails. Okay, so if the degree is one, then x, then v has a unique neighbor, which we call x. Now, of course, you know, when the algorithm now takes a step from v to x, what happens? So, okay, so x is the only neighbor of v, so it has to go from 
v to x. Um, and when that happens, what what will happen is that both the edge, so the edge from v to from v to x gets erased, but also the vertex v gets erased because the degree of v goes from one to zero. But if you think about it, this can't disconnect the graph, right? So the graph, if I take a, you know, vertex, so I have some graph which is connected, right? Some sort of graph here, and I've got a vertex with degree one, and I delete this edge, and I delete the vertex, that doesn't disconnect the graph. So that's a contradiction, meaning that the algorithm couldn't have failed when the current vertex has degree one. Okay, so let's, uh, so this is the most interesting case. So this is the final case of the proof. Um, suppose when the algorithm fails, the degree of the current vertex V has, uh, sorry, is the degree is at least two. So remember, what do we mean by the algorithm failing, right? Like, so the way the algorithm goes, it starts somewhere, it goes to a neighbor, it erases the edge, it goes to a neighbor, it erases the edge, and it always chooses a neighbor such that erasing that edge will not disconnect the graph. So, um, <clears throat> So since the algorithm failed, what that means is that there's no good choice for the next vertex. So the current vertex is V. I look at, so all of the current neighbors of V are like a valid, well, they, they're a, a potential candidate for the next vertex of the circuit. And if the algorithm fails, then none of those choices were any good because ev for every choice, if I go to that vertex, I erase the edge, it'll uh, disconnect the graph. So the picture looks like this. Like I've got, I've got the vertex V in the middle. I've got some neighbors of V. And if I delete that edge, so if I take a step here and I delete the edge, it'll disconnect the graph, right? So this will be a connected component and this will be a connected compo component of the graph. If I go from V to this one and I delete that edge, it'll disconnect the graph. And every, for every neighbor of V, no matter which way I go, it's gonna disconnect the graph by erasing the edge. Um, now here is a, here's the, the key observation. If I look at these blobs here, so these are the, so these kind of purple blobs here. So these are the components of the graph um, you get by deleting the vertex V. If you delete V and all of the edges that touch V. Now, one of these components has the, contains the, well, maybe one of these components contains the starting vertex of the circuit. Okay, actually though, if you think about it, if the starting vertex of the circuit might already be erased, in which case none of these components contain the starting vertex, but certainly there's at most one of them that has the starting vertex. So the starting vertex maybe is in this component here, but then the starting vertex cannot be here, it cannot be here, it can't be anywhere else, right? There's only one of them. So now look at this component here, which doesn't contain the starting vertex of the circuit, okay? Now, since it doesn't contain the starting vertex of the circuit, so every vertex here has been, every time it was entered, you, you know, every time you entered that vertex, you also left the vertex. So currently, every vertex here has even degree. So the only vertex in the whole graph that doesn't have even degree is the starting vertex, right? Because the starting vertex, I left that vertex, um, and I may have come back to it and left, but basically I've, I've changed the degree of that vertex by an odd amount, but every other vertex has been, except for V, has been like entered and, and left the same number of times. So these vertices here have currently have even degree because they started with even degree and their degree went down by two a certain number of times. But what if I now think about this component after I delete V? So this vertex here that's adjacent to V it's when I delete V, its uh, degree goes from um, all, even to odd. So it's odd degree, you get odd degree after deleting V, um, but none of the other vertices here change their degree, okay? That's because this, this edge is the only one from V into this component because erasing this edge would disconnect the graph. Okay. This is rather complicated, but so here's the point that in this component, if I delete, after I delete V, this component has exactly one vertex of odd degree. But a component can't have exactly one vertex of odd degree, remember? Because of handshaking, the component must have an even number of odd degree vertices because the sum of the degrees has to be even. So if this, so 
to kind of say that again, if I delete V, I look at this component, every vertex has even degree except for one. So if I add up the degrees, I'm going to have even plus 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 odd, which makes an odd number. But the sum of the degrees cannot be odd by handshaking. So, um, so that's a contradiction. So this contradicts the handshaking lemma, and this proves that actually this algorithm always works. So there's always a choice which doesn't disconnect the graph. Um, so I understand that that was quite long and technical. Um, it's very hard to do this online, to, to analyze this algorithm. Basically, any, any proof that takes more than one slide is very hard to do online. Um, but uh, so I apologize, if, I apologize if that was uh, a little bit rough. But are there any questions about that? Like I said, the most important things to do, like for you to be able to do is, you know, if you take a graph, you need to be able to um, recognize whether it has an Eulerian circuit or in other words, can I draw that graph in a way that I uh, start and end at the same vertex? So you need to be able to recognize that, which is just based on checking that all the degrees are even. Um, and you may also have to be able to, to use this algorithm to find an Eulerian circuit. Okay, so so yeah, it's not so, so, so important to understand how the algorithm works and why it works, but it's more important to understand how do you apply this to a specific example. Okay, so yeah, so that completes the proof of the theorem. Um, let me give you a, an easy corollary of this. So, so here we've been talking about Eulerian circuits. So the cir an Eulerian circuit is a way of going around every edge of the graph, so traveling along every edge and s ending in the same place where you started. Um, and you could also ask about an Eulerian trail. So an Eulerian trail is just a walk that uses every edge exactly once, right? So a trail uses every edge at most once, and here we're trying to, so it's an Eulerian trail if it uses every edge exactly once. Okay, so that's the, basically it's the same thing as an Eulerian circuit, except you can start and end in different places. So we don't, so in a trail, you don't have to start and end at the same vertex. Now a corollary of Euler's theorem is then that a graph has an Eulerian trail if and only if it's connected and the number of vertices of odd degree is at most two. So why is this the case? So there's an easy proof of this using Euler's theorem, but does anyone see why this is true or how this follows, how you would prove this using Euler's theorem? Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say here is you have, so you can draw, so I mean, remember this picture? Oh dear, I hope I don't mess it up. Boom, got it. Uh, so remember this picture? Here you've got two vertices of odd degree, right? Degree three, degree three. These ones have, that one has degree four and four and two, right? And remember it was important. Yeah, so that's that's a that's an important thing that if you have two vertices of odd degree, your trail has to start at one of them and end at the other, right? Because every in, in intermediate vertex, for every intermediate vertex, you always enter it and then leave it. So that always adds two to the degree, right? So this was this observation from the beginning when I was messing up this picture by trying to start here, right? Trying to start at the top corner and you can never do it. You know, I can't, I can't get the last edge, right? So you have to, so if you want to find an Eulerian trail and if you have two vertices of odd degree, you have to start at one and end at the other. But how do I prove that this always exists? Like no matter what, it always exists. And actually, it's not that hard. So, so here's how you do it. So here's how you prove this corollary. So if, so okay, so I said that there's at most two vertices of odd degree, there might be zero, right? So if there's, if every vertex has even degree, then all we do is we find an Eulerian circuit and, uh, and an Eulerian circuit is an Eulerian trail, right? So in a trail, you don't have to end and start at, this, at different vertices. You can end and start at the same vertex. Okay. Um, could there be one vertex of odd degree? Well, there can't, right? If you had only one vertex of odd degree, that's impossible because the sum of the degrees is even by the handshaking lemma. So now suppose that there's exactly two vertices of odd degree, x and y. Um, so Sorry, this is a typo here. This should say add the edge x, y. Okay, remember, so the edge x, y might already exist, right? There might already be an edge from x to y. But remember, we're dealing with multigraphs here. So in a multigraph, I can have the same edge twice. 
So I just add another one. Okay. So if I if I add another copy of that edge, I end up with a graph where every vertex has even degree. So if every vertex has even degree, I can find an Eulerian circuit, so which starts and ends at the same vertex. And so maybe I if I take that edge that I added, I color it red, let's say. So this is like the red one is the new edge that I added. So if I take an Eulerian circuit, it uses every edge once. So in particular, it uses the edge, the red edge, once, right? And basically I can think of that as I can remove that edge from the circuit and start, so you know, start at y um, from the point after that red edge is used. So and that'll go through every edge exactly once and it'll end at x. Right? So here's the kind of idea. If you kind of write down, okay, so I'm gonna kind of draw this as a cycle, even though it's a circuit. So some of these vertices may be repeated. This might be the vertex W, and that might be the vertex W, right? So you can kind of represent your Eulerian circuit like this, and it uses every edge exactly once, including the red edge. And I just kind of imagine I remove that edge. I start here, and I go through the other steps and end with X, <clears throat> okay? Or if I, if I want to look at this specific example, right, this thing, right? So why does there... Why, why is there a way to draw this? Well, the reason is because if I take this graph where I add <clears throat> an extra edge here, <clears throat> then all the degrees are even, right? And so I can, I can draw this thing um, in a way that I start and end at the same vertex. And then I can just kind of imagine I, I take out the red edge, right? So I don't, I don't use that one. Um, and I just follow from the... I t look at the time when I drew the red edge, and I follow from after that uh, until the end. I don't know if that makes any sense, but is that clear? Okay, so the conclusion from all of this is basically if you have a graph with uh, at most two odd degree vertices, then you can draw it without lifting your pen. Um, but you have to start at the odd one, and you have to end at the other odd one. But it's always possible, and you can do it using this Flurry's algorithm. Any questions about anything? Okay. Uh, so let's do a quick poll. So which of these graphs can you draw without lifting your pen? So let's see. So which ones is it possible? Which ones, <clears throat> for which ones is it impossible? Um, and I'm not asking necessarily about you personally. So <laughs> I guess I should say for which graphs is it possible and for which graphs is it not? Um, okay. The first one, so it looks like, which is a good thing, no one's choosing the first one which is good because here I've got degree, what is it, five? Uh, all of these ones have degree five. So there's four odd degree vertices, so that's impossible. I mean, th the second one we've seen a million times now, right? This has only two odd degree vertices, so it's possible. Um, so the first one is a no, right? Second one is a yes. Oh dear, what's this third one? Uh, <clears throat> so the third one is kind of, uh, we've got split opinions. Um, so how many odd degree vertices do I have? I've got that one. Oh dear. So that one's one, two, three, four, five. So that's odd, right? That's three, that's five. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It looks like the answer to this one's yes. Um, so that's how that, so if I just ask you this question, like which of these have Eulerian Two, uh, sorry, circuits or Eulerian trails. Um, all it comes down to is counting vertices of odd degree and seeing is it two or is it uh, more than two. So this is two odd degree. And if I had one here with zero odd degree vertices, the answer would also be yes. Okay. Any questions about that? So if I ask you just yes or no, does it exist? And I don't ask you to prove it. Well, sorry, if I if I don't ask you to show me a circuit or a trail, uh, then you can just count vertices of odd degree or even degree. But if I ask you to find an Eulerian circuit, then you have to be able to actually find it. So that's those are two different questions. Okay, so so it was uh, no, yes, yes. Um, right, so just an, a recap. So an Eulerian circuit is a walk in a graph that uses every edge exactly once, and they exist if and only if every graph has even degree. So that just repeating what we've been talking about. Um, now, <clears throat> something which sounds similar, like so you might wonder, so here we were talking about a walk that uses every 
edge exactly once and either ends where it started or not. Um, a natural question then is to ask, like, what if I have a walk in a graph that uses every vertex exactly once and ends up where it started? Okay, this sounds similar, right? So, so today, just to, to, to repeat that, today we've been talking about walks which use every edge exactly once. What if I ask about a walk that uses every vertex exactly once? Sounds like almost the same thing. Like, if, if it's easy to cover every edge exactly once, it should also be easy to cover every vertex exactly once or to recognize whether it's possible or not, right? It should be just something with the degrees or something like that. Um, at least it would seem like this should be an easy problem. Um, but actually, it's a very different problem, okay? And it's a much harder problem. So that's all I want to com communicate to you right now, that there's no simple way to determine if, there's a, if you can go through all the vertices of a graph um, and come back to where you started. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about next time.